Hello everyone. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. In this video we will learn how to use YOLO V3, a state-of-the-art object detector with OpenCV. YOLO V3 is a popular object detection algorithm. The published model recognizes 80 different objects in images and videos, but most importantly, it is super fast and nearly as accurate as single-shot multi-box, short-form SSD. This video mainly focuses on inference, we will use our custom trained model for inference, which we have trained in our previous video, you can find that tutorial in our playlist with the name train YOLO v3 to detect custom objects with free GPU. Without further ado let's get started, first of all, we will need an IDE, and inside the IDE we need to install OpenCV and NumPy, I'm using PyCharm IDE in this tutorial, you can use Spider, Visual Studio, or any other IDE. I have already installed these two libraries, so there is no need to install it again, you can install it through pip, or with any other way, after installing these libraries, we need to import it. Then we will declare a cap variable and will assign a video capture class to it for capturing the frames. I have entered the video path inside the video capture class because I'm passing video to capture from. If you want to read the images from your webcam change the text inside the video capture class to zero in case you are using one webcam. If you are using two webcams change it to one, and so on. Then we will initialize some variables like the width and height of the network's input image, confidence threshold, and the non-maximum suppression threshold. I'll explain these variables in detail in the later part of this video. Next, we will specify our label, as we have trained our model for only pistol detection, so we write only pistol in the list if you have trained your model for multiple objects write all the object labels in the same order in which you have annotated your object. Then we will assign the paths of configuration and weight files for the model. Next, we will load the network, by passing the paths of configuration and weight files. We set the DNN backend to OpenCV here and the target to CPU. You could try setting the preferable target to cv2.dnn.dnn target OpenCL to run it on a GPU. But keep in mind that the current OpenCV version is tested only with Intel's GPUs. It would automatically switch to CPU if you do not have an Intel GPU. Next, we will move to the image reading part. In the while loop condition, we specified that if the video source is open, we will read from it frame by frame. Next, cap.read reads the single frame from the source and stores it in the frame variable, and upon successful reading, it stores true in the success variable. Next, if the frame is successfully read by the cap.read we will do our processing on it. Remember the input image to a neural network needs to be in a certain format called a blob, we cannot pass the plan image to the neural network. After a frame is read from a webcam or video stream, it is passed through the blob from image function to convert it to an input blob for the neural network. In this process, it scales the image pixel values to a target range of 0 to 1 using a scale factor of 1 by 255. It also resizes the image to our specified size of 320 by 320 without cropping. Note that we do not perform any mean subtraction here, hence pass zeros to the mean parameter of the function and keep the swap or be parameter to its default value to true. The output blob is then passed into the network as its input. The forward function in OpenCV's net class needs the ending layer till which it should run in the network. Since we want to run through the whole network, we need to identify the last layer of the network. We do that by using the function get unconnected out layers which returns the names of the unconnected output layers, which are essentially the last layers of the network. Then we run the forward pass of the network to get output from the output layers, by passing output layer names to the forward function. Now let's explore the inside details of the output layers. The total number of output layers is 3. And inside the shapes of each output layer, 300, 1200, and 4800 represent the number of bounding boxes the output layers generate and 6 are the values inside each bounding box detection, which varies according to the number of objects. The network output's bounding boxes are each represented by a vector of a number of classes plus 5 elements. The first 4 elements represent the center x, center y, width, and height. The fifth element represents the confidence that the bounding box encloses an object. The last value is the confidence associated with pistol class. Next, 
we will pass the outputs and the current frame to the find objects function. Inside this function we extract the height, width, and number of channels from the image, then we initialize three lists, in which we will store bounding box coordinates, class labels, and confidence scores. And as we discussed earlier that we have three output layers, so we are processing each one by one. And in each output, we have multiple detections. In the detection list, from the fifth index to the rest, are the confidence or the probability scores of all the objects, so we are storing the index of the high confidence object, and also the confidence value. Now if the confidence of a box is less than the defined threshold, the bounding box is dropped and not considered for further processing. And remember we set the confidence threshold value to 0.5 in the earlier part of this notebook. If the confidence of a box is greater or equal to the specified threshold, we will store the bounding box coordinates of the object. The first four elements represent the center x, center y, width, and height, and these are the float values not the actual pixels of the image, so we are multiplying these box values with the width and height of our image to get the x, y, width and height. And in the case of x and y, as these are the center values so we subtract half of the image's height and width to get the x and y values. After getting bounding box coordinates values, we are storing it in the list that we have defined. The stored boxes are then subjected to non-maximum suppression. Perform non-maximum suppression to eliminate redundant overlapping boxes with lower confidence. This would reduce the number of overlapping boxes. The non-maximum suppression is controlled by the NMS threshold parameter. If NMS threshold is set too low, like equal to 0.1, we might not detect overlapping objects of the same or different classes, but if it is set too high like equal to 1, then we get multiple boxes for the same object. That's why we set an intermediate value of 0.3 in our code above. To understand the non-maximum suppression, I'll show you an image. You can see most of these bounding boxes are eliminated because their confidence is low or because they are enclosing the same object as another bounding box with a very high confidence score. Now, here we are scanning through all the bounding boxes stored in our list and keeping only the ones filtered by non-maximum suppression with high confidence scores. Next, we draw the boxes that were filtered through the non-maximum suppression, on the input frame with their assigned class label and confidence scores. Finally, we will display the image on which we have drawn bounding boxes. And we'll delay the image for 1 millisecond on screen. If you change the value inside the weight key to 0, the image will be displayed on the screen until you press some key. And ORD returns the Unicode of Q. If we press Q on screen during the execution, the loop will end. And now let's run the code to see how our trained model is detecting pistols. You are seeing that our model is showing good performance, detecting pistols object correctly. You can improve the performance of your model by increasing the number of images in your custom dataset and also by adding real-time images. And can train for a high number of epics. Be careful not to overfit it. So that's all for today's video. Thanks for watching till the end.